Uh, in this video, let me talk about how to use the table in the back of the textbook to determine the appropriate numbers for using the T distribution. Um, there are several types of problems that we've seen, um, left tail tests, right tail tests, um, two tail tests, and confidence interval problems. Let's just kind of talk about them one at a time. First off, let's talk about a left tail test problem. So here's our T distribution. And let's say for the sake of argument that this is a T distribution with uh, 13 degrees of freedom. And suppose that the area to the left is supposed to be equal to 1%. So how do we get this number? Um, clearly we need a negative number. If 1% of the area lies to the left, we can, ha we can basically uh, consider a analogous problem where I have the T distribution, but this time we have 1% of the area lying to the right. And I think that went off the edge of the screen, so let me move that over. Okay, so hopefully you can see that now. So 1% of the area lies to the right. <clears throat> um, so for the uh, T distribution with 13 degrees of freedom, if 1% of the area lies to the right, that means that 99% of the area lies to the left. So for this picture here at the bottom, I would come over here to the table. We have 13 degrees of freedom and 99% of the area is supposed to lie to the left. You see that from the picture here that the number on the top here gives me the area to the left. So for 0.99 area to the left and 13 degrees of freedom, if I'm reading the table correctly, and there's always a chance that I'm going up or down by a row, so I'm be careful about this, I believe the number is right here, 2.6503. Uh, Let me double check that, 13. If I move over to the right very carefully, 2.6503. So this uh, T coordinate is 2.6503. And so the critical value that I would need for this problem would be the T critical is negative 2.6503. Uh, okay, so that's doing a left tailed uh, T test. For a right-tailed t-test, it's going to look like the picture that I had at the bottom. So let's uh, start the problem again. Now let's imagine that I have a right-tailed t-test. And suppose that I need the area to the right to be equal to 2%. And let's suppose that this is a T distribution with 10 degrees of freedom. Okay, so if 2% of the area lies to the right, that means that 98% lies to the left. So on the table here, 98% to the left, 5 degrees of freedom over here. So we march over to the t right uh, part of the table. We get 2.7565. Uh, sorry, let me start over again. Uh, 2.7565. And that would be the critical value for this particular problem using a right tail test. Okay, now let's uh, turn to a problem that involves a two tail test. So if I, let me just make up one. We have a two tail test. T distribution goes like this. And suppose that this is a T distribution with uh, 7 degrees of freedom. And suppose that I need the area in both tails for this two tail test. Suppose I need alpha to be equal to 0.1. Okay, now there's a couple ways of doing this. 
we note that if 90% of the area, if 10% of the area lies in the sides, that means that 5% lies in this tail. That means 5% lies in this tail. And that leaves 90% in the middle. So one thing that I could do is look up 95%, 0.95. Look up for this number here, where this cutoff, 95% of the area lies to the left, 90% in the middle, and 5% uh, to the far left. So I would look up 95% here, the uh, uh, right here, for the area to the left, with seven degrees of freedom, it takes me to this number, 1.8946. So this would be 1.8946. 8946 and conversely on the other side negative 1.8946. Uh, there is a second way of doing this problem with the table and that's by looking at the two-sided confidence level that's way down here at the bottom of the table. So the two-sided confidence level basically means the area in the middle is 90 percent. So if 95 percent of the area lies to the left that means that 90% of the area lies in the middle. So that again points me to the correct column in uh, the table. And 7 degrees of freedom takes me to 1.8946. <clears throat> so that's how to get the critical values for the two-tailed test. Uh, finally, let's talk about confidence intervals. So suppose that we have a confidence interval problem for the T distribution. Okay, suppose I need a 95% confidence interval. And suppose I have a T distribution with 20 degrees of freedom. All right, there's uh, two ways of approaching this. The fastest way using the table in the back of the book is to go down here to the bottom where I have a two-sided confidence level of 95%. Then I go up the table until I find 20 degrees of freedom, which I believe is uh, where the cursor is now at 2.086. And so the number that I would need for when computing the confidence interval would be 2.0860. Okay. So that would be one way of getting the critical value. That's probably the easiest way. Another way of getting it would be to find the area to the left as before. If 95% of the area lies in the middle, that means 2.5% lies to the tail to the left. And that should be 2.5%. Let's see if I can get the decimal point in. There we go. So that means 97.5% lies to the left. So looking at 0.975 here, and then going down to 20 degrees of freedom, I'm in the same column, obviously, and I get the critical value of 2.860. So that's a little bit about how to use the table in the back of the book for the T distribution.